Hi guys, it's Erin with ESG. Today I'll be taking you through the training on the MyCollab client. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the MyCollab client, it is a desktop application that you download to your computer that fully synchronizes your desk phone with your computer. Now in this training, we're going to break it down into a several different sections so that you can get to the information that you need to get to when you need to get to it. And first, before we get started, I just wanna talk a little bit about the differences that you might see between my application here and the one that you have on your desktop. There are two different license types that give you access to the MyCollab client. There is an entry license type as well as a standard license type. Um, there are four key differences between the two different types of licenses and I'll point those out as we go along. All right, let's get started. When you first log into your MyCollab client, you will come to your contacts view, as we see here, um, with a listing of all of the contacts within your organization, listed by first name and then last name. Now, underneath each person's name, we see a line that we call the status line, and we'll talk more about how to change or adjust those statuses in just a bit. And next to each, uh, each contact in our organization, we see up to three icons. The first icon that we'll talk about is this video icon. This means that this person is logged into the application and available for video chat. The second icon of a dialog box, that is indicates that this person is logged into the application and is available for chat or instant message. The third icon, this phone here, green means that this phone, person's phone is idle, meaning they are not on a call. Um, if we were to see a red icon like we do down here with Bob, that means that Bob is currently using his phone for a call. So we can see right at a glance that if we need to get a hold of Bob, we're not going to call him because he's already on a call. Um, also, next to our, or to go with these icons, um, to initiate contact with this person, all you need to do is simply press on the icon that you would like to um, communicate with that person. So for instance, and I'll show you here in the search bar, if you're searching for a specific person within your organization, you can type in the information that you know, either their first name, last name, or extension, and it will pull up that person for you. So if I'm looking for Kristen, I can type in her name and it pulls up Kristen for me. Now, if I want to call Kristen, place a call to her extension, all I need to do is click on that phone icon. You'll see that that places the call on speakerphone. To make it a private call, you simply just need to lift your handset. And then if I would like to initiate a chat with Kristen, I simply click on the chat icon. I can start typing and press enter to send. When Kristen replies, we'll see right above our dialog box here um, when she is typing back. And then we'll also see that timestamp of information for when that person replies to us. Now within a chat, um, you have a couple of different options down here at the bottom. If you click on the smiley face icon here, you can choose to put uh, different emojis into your uh, text box. If you would like to start a group chat, inviting more individuals onto your chat, you can click on the person with the plus sign here, and you can search through your contacts to find someone who is available for chat. When you click on that person and invite them into your chat, you'll see a list now on the left-hand column indicating all of the individuals that are on your chat. Anyone that you add to your chat can read anything uh, happening in your chat from the point where you added them. So for instance, Jeff would not be able to see what Kristen and I had chatted about prior to the time that I added him to our chat. Now at any time during a chat, if you would like to escalate this to a uh, audio and uh, web conference, you can simply click on this, uh, the hands shaking icon here that will initiate an audio web video conference with this person or people in our case here. And to exit out of a chat, all you do is click on that X in the top right corner. All right. Now, uh, also some more information that you can get from our contacts view here is if you right click on any of our uh, contacts listed here and you hover over the top option that says call, you can see all of the phone numbers that are associated with this individual. So desk phone and mobile phone, if those are uh, programmed into the phone system. You can also see when you right click here that you can start a chat this way. You can also find that person's email address, 
And then, like I said before, if you would like to escalate to a video call or start a conference with that individual, you can do that from this screen as well. All right. So we talked a little bit about our search bar here that we can search through our contacts list. But I'm also going to show you right above there where it says make a call that you can place a call outbound to any number simply by typing it in our make a call box. This works for internal numbers as well as external numbers. You would just type in the number as you would dial it from your phone and when you press the call button here it will initiate that call from your desk phone. All right. Then moving up here in our contacts view, um, we also see uh, some information about ourselves. So obviously we see our picture here on the left. To the right of my name here, I have my status. And then right below that, I have a tagline of additional information that you can type in regarding your status so that others within your organization can kind of see what you're up to. Are you in the office, out of the office, that sort of thing. And then our, my third line of information here uh, tells others within my organization that I'm in an appointment until 5 o'clock p.m. because I have my calendar integration enabled, which we'll talk about in just a bit. All right. Another um, option that you have here within your context view is creating uh, groups for yourself. So everyone is listed in your corporate directory, but if you have you know, lots of people within your organization, you can break those down into groups so that um, you are only seeing the, the people and the information that you need to work with on a daily basis. So to do so, I'm going to click on the plus sign here to add a group, and I'm going to name that. Maybe it's your department or your division. An IT group we'll, we'll make. That group is automatically added to the bottom of our list here. And then I simply search through my contacts to add them to my group. So if I um, type in Chris and I want to add Chris to my group, I right click on Chris's name and go all the way to the bottom and put him into my IT group. Now, like I said, that keeps him in our corporate directory, but also adds him to my personal group that I created for myself. Now, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I can open up my IT group and see those folks listed that I've added to that group. You can also add contacts to your MyCollab client. So for instance, if you had a customer that you were working with or some outside number that you wanted to add to your MyCollab client, you could click on that same plus sign to add a contact. You would just name that. So for instance, you could add your home number. And then to add the phone number, you click on the plus sign, give it a description, which is the same as the name that you gave it. And you type in the number just as you would dial it from your phone, but without that leading digit of either 8 or 9, whatever your dial-out number is. The system will automatically add that dial-out number for you. So depending on how you dial out, if you need the area code or not. Once you add that phone number and click OK, you'll see that it will add it to a, another group that it lists as other contacts. And then you can create... Uh, Treat this contact just as you would treat any of your other contacts. You can right click to call this individual. Um, you can double click to call this individual and have that um, within your contacts in your MyCollab client. All right, so that wraps up our contacts view. Um, the next section we're going to go through is our call history and talk a little bit more about that feature. All right, the next section that we're going to discuss is regarding the call history. Now, if I click on the next icon down here on the right-hand panel of my MyCollab client, that is my call history option. Now, you'll see when you click on your call history that it initially goes to all of your call history. Um, I can also sort by my missed calls, received calls, or dialed calls. And if it was an internal uh, extension that I chatted with or that I uh, missed a call from, you'll be able to see that person's status as well as their availability to be able to communicate back to that person. Now with your received and your dialed calls, you also have the ability to click on that individual call history record to take notes as to what you discussed on that call, um, follow up from that call, things like that. So you can edit your notes here and that will apply to that specific call history entry. You can also search through your call history. So if you know that you're searching for someone in, in particular so that you can see when you uh, last communicated with that person, you can type in the person's name or phone number, whatever information you know about that person. And it will bring up all of the um, instances of you talking with that person. All right, next section that we're going to cover is our visual voicemail. 
All right, the next section we're going to discuss is our visual voicemail. If I click on the voicemail icon here, it brings me to a list of all of the voicemails that I have in my voicemail box. You'll be able to um, decipher between your missed uh, one, voicemails that you have not listened to yet, as well as the ones that you already have listened to. Um, you'll also be able to see the caller ID of that individual, as well as internal um, folks that called you. You'll be able to see their status, as well as if they're available for chat or call. Um, you'll also see a timestamp of that voicemail as well as the duration of that voicemail. When you click on a voicemail that is in your mailbox, you'll see icons appear on the bottom of your screen that allow you to play the message on your computer speakers. You can also delete the message right from here, and you can also forward the message on to another destination. The last icon here on the bottom right, uh, you can request a playback call so that if you, let's say, don't have computer speakers or if you just don't want it to play back publicly, you want it to be a private uh, message that you can listen to, you can click on the playback and request that it calls you on your desk phone, your cell phone, whatever in, uh, numbers you have listed there. Then what happens is your desk phone will ring and then you'll be able to List, pick up the handset and your message will start playing immediately. All right, the next section that we'll discuss is our launch pad. All right, the last icon here on the right hand panel that we will talk about is our launch pad. Now, this is a feature only with the uh, standard license. So when I click on the launch pad, basically this is kind of like my favorites bar in a, in a browser. It allows me to place different URLs, contacts, things like that, so that all of my information that I want right at, right at my fingertips is right here on my launch pad. If I right click in any of the white space here, you'll see that you can add an application, a contact, a folder, or a website. For instance, if I wanted to add a website here that I wanted to just uh, click here to access that website. You can name it whatever you'd like. And then enter the valid URL. Click on add. And then you'll see when you click on that icon, it will bring up that website for you. So it's just a nice place that you can put all of your contacts, um, all of your websites, things like that, that you want all at your fingertips right here onto your launch pad. All right, last section of our training will be talking about our configuration and personalization settings. All right, the last section here, we'll go over some different ways that you can personalize your MyCollab client. Um, and this is really something that you would do the first time that you log in to just kind of get it set up the way that you want it to be. And then you can leave it alone from that point on. So if I click on my name in the top left corner here, you'll see my drop down with some different options. The first option that we'll go through is this configuration menu. Now, when you click on your configuration menu, you'll see some different options along here on the left hand side. The first option that we'll discuss is the appearance option. Now, by default, all of your contacts are displayed by first name and then last name. You can change that to be last name, first name if you choose. And then you can also choose to show everyone's contact picture or just take those pictures away. The next option here is our calendar integration, and this is something that is available with the standard license. The calendar integration allows you to enable the MyCollab client to look to your Outlook calendar and pull when you have busy times or appointments on your Outlook calendar, and it will adjust your status in your MyCollab client accordingly. So if you have this um, setting enabled, you can also have it set an advisory message for you, meaning that when I am in a meeting and I have that time marked off as busy on my Outlook calendar, I can have the MyCollab client automatically change my status to reflect that. So I can say that when my calendar says that I'm busy, I can have my status change to any of these options from the drop down here. And then once that busy time is complete on my Outlook calendar, I can tell the system where to change my status back to, either my previous status or any of my other statuses from the drop-down menu here. All right, the next uh, menu option here that we'll discuss is the call notification. Now, when you receive an incoming call, you will get a pop-up in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen um, with information about that call. In the call notification tab here, you can adjust whether you want those pop-ups to occur or not. So it's just basically when you get a call coming in, do you want that pop-up to show? 
Next option down here is for our chat settings. So in our chat feature, our instant message feature, you'll be able to say when you want your chat status to go from green, meaning that you are actively at your computer, to change to away, that yellow um, status icon. You can choose how many minutes you want to elapse before um, that change occurs. Same thing with those pop-ups again. When you get an incoming uh, chat, you will get a pop-up in the bottom right corner of your screen. You can choose to enable or not uh, have those occur. Um, then also your chat history. You can uh, choose to have the system record your chat history so that you can access it later on down the road. Um, keep in mind that even if you deselect this option, the chat history is still recorded on the server side. Um, this is just saying whether or not you want to record it um, on your client here. Um, and then some other options here as well as they pertain to your chat uh, settings. The next option here that I want to go through is the PIM integration. You can have um, the MyCollab client look to your Outlook contacts and bring those contacts into your uh, MyCollab client for you um, using this PIM integration here. And then the last option here that I want to discuss is the contacts view. So by default, if you double click on a contact within your MyCollab client, it will place a call to that person's default number. You can also change that to when I double click on a person, I want it to start a chat with that person or just show their contact information. So you can personalize that here. So once you've got your settings here in your configuration complete, um, next icon or next item here that I wanna go through is my manage account option. When I click here, this is where I'm going to be able to change my picture on my account. Um, I would simply just click on change picture and then upload any picture that I have uh, on my computer. You can also change your password for your MyCollab client from this screen here. And then finally, you can change your voicemail pin as well. So if you ever need to change your voicemail pin, um, instead of having your system administrator do that, you can do that right here from your MyCollab client. Now the two options right below there, I always recommend that people double, uh, click on both of those boxes there. Um, what that means is when I click the first box here, every time that I open my windows or log into my computer, it's automatically going to start the My Collab client for me so that I don't have to remember to open the application every day. And then the second box here automatically logs you into the client so that you don't have to put your username and password in every day. So those options are there for you as well. All right, the next item here is to manage our statuses. So with the standard license, you can um, create additional statuses as well as tell the system where to send your calls um, and make your calls from when you are in a particular status. Um, and with the entry license, you'll just see that there are four different canned statuses to choose from. Um, you can still um, put in a default message for each of those statuses within the MyCollab client um, home screen. So when you're managing your statuses, you'll see that you can create new statuses as well as delete existing statuses. Within each of these statuses, so for instance, in a meeting, I can tell the system where to make my calls from, which typically we leave at our desk phone extension. I can also tell the system where to send my calls to. And if you are someone who has the cell phone twinning feature, uh, meaning when your desk phone rings, it also rings out to your cell phone, you'll have the option here to check your desk phone as well as your cell phone, or just your desk phone, depending on how you want those calls to come in. Also with each status, you'll have the option to appear offline or to accept those video chats, those video calls. And then same with your instant messages. You can appear offline or online for chat within each of your different statuses. Then to um, change statuses or use a status, you simply click on your status here next to your picture and then choose uh, whatever status you would like to go into. With each of those statuses, like I mentioned, you have this tagline of information that you can type in additional information so that people within your organization kind of know how they can best get a hold of you, know where you are, what you're up to, that sort of thing. Also from this um, top option here, um, you have the ability to start a conference, which would connect to the audio web video conferencing system. So if that is an application that you're using within your organization, this is an easy way to access your uh, audio web video conferencing system. You can also choose to import your contacts from your Outlook contacts. Um, you can do that right from here. 
And then the other option here within your main menu is the help. Um, so anytime that you would like additional information on any item within the MyCollab client, you can certainly click on the help option here and it will bring you to additional information pertaining to whatever screen that you are currently looking at on your MyCollab client. All right, well that wraps up our training. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you have any additional questions, please refer to your, your user guide or contact your system administrator. It's been great, we'll see you next time.